Okay guys, I've been getting a lot of questions about swales and uh, I think part of it is I generally show you the swales when they're full because they're interesting when they're full. And uh, so I decided I'll show you an empty swale today and talk about well, what exactly is a swale, what is its purpose, and what does it do as I walk down in here. Well you see they're relatively shallow. <coughs> I think part of the confusion is when people draw them, they draw this big deep ditch. And a proper swale, it might be pretty deep, but if it's deep, it's really wide. You might have a, you know, a foot and a half, two and a half foot deep swell, but it's probably nine, ten feet wide if you're doing that. We're in much smaller earthworks territory here. These swells are about six foot wide, and they're about 11 inches deep. And we size the depth and height based on how far we could dig before we hit bedrock in this area. Now, what is the purpose? People, can you line it with bentonite and turn it into a pond? Well, you'd have a you know, an 11 inch deep pond. It wouldn't hold water for very long, would it? Uh, well, what is it going to turn the place into a marsh? Nope. And the reason is, the way marshes get formed is, you know, the land has contours and water concentrates in a single area, like a valley, and you get a marsh. Well, what does a swell do? A swell, as you can see, this, this swell here is uh, several hundred feet long. And what it does, it follows the contours of the land. The reason it makes all these turns is not because I thought it was pretty. It makes all these turns because this is a contour. If you look at a contour map where you see a contour line, that's what this is. We use the laser level to find the contour in the land, and we put this ditch in. And people say, well, it's just a ditch. Well, it's a ditch, and all swales are ditches, but very few ditches are swales. A swale is level. Or it might be just a little bit off contour for playing with key line. We won't get into that today. So how does the water get out of this swale, right? Because what everybody thinks is that bank right there is what holds the water in. That bank is absolutely not what holds the water in this swale. What holds the water in the swale is the swale itself, the ditch. And that brings us here to what's called a sill. If you notice, the bank stops there and it picks back up there. That is not so the bank can hold it in, it's so the bank won't get in the way of us letting the water out. This opening here is called a sill. It's highly compacted, and it's just a little bit lower than the rest of the lip of the swell. What we did when we put this in, we took the excavator, we turned the bucket like this, and we flattened this ground back like this out to about right here so that it's just a little bit lower and water can get out there. You notice it's about six foot wide. For this side swale, that's about the size you want. Other swales, you might want a nine or 12 foot wide sill, okay? The reason is the wider this is, the more the water will sheet gently over when it comes out. And that's why, even though we've had major rains this year, two inches in a couple hours, and these things blew out their sills. They were running and water was coming across the ground, completely full, can't take any more water running out there. There's no erosion. There's no erosion because it's passive water. Now, where's that water end up? It ends up flowing through there, and it ends up out there in that ditch, and it goes down the road, where it would have gone anyway, except with these three mainframe swales, and there's actually other smaller swales that interconnect that I can't get into today. With these three mainframe swales, about 26,000 gallons when the rain stops is sitting in the swales. That's just how much water they could hold. And they're probably infiltrating a good 10, 11,000 before they start to fill up. Water comes in and immediately infiltrates. The next question, well, doesn't it create mosquitoes? Doesn't it get, you know, swampy? Doesn't it get stagnant? Well, it poured rain last week, and you see what's here. It is not designed to hold the water in. It is designed to infiltrate the water into the ground, which is why that narrow leaf plantain in this swale mound looks like somebody dumped you know, commercial fertilizer on it. I promise you nothing over here has been fertilized this year. That's the power of duck poop, right? It has been fertilized. The ducks poop in the swale, the nutrient gets spread out, it infiltrates, it does wick up into this bank, and it continues to flow, and the water continues to move at right angle to contour, that's a fancy way of saying downhill, through the land instead of over the land. The only spot that we compacted, only spot that we compacted when we put these in is this right here, this sill. We also came over here and slightly, a little less so, compacted the end of this swale. And because of a landform I won't get into, it wasn't necessary, but we would have done it there. And this is what's called a secondary sill. So this is an end sill. 
And if that sill has exceeded its capacity, water begins to flow out of here as well, also sheeting. We've had rain events that have done that to us. It's worked just fine. So the purpose of this, again, to harvest the water, to spread it out. Marshes concentrate it. This spreads it out. As we spread out, we spread fertility. We infiltrate water. That reduces our, or actually improves our drought tolerance. We can go longer without rain because we put so much water into the system. Um, again, not going to get stagnant because it's not designed to hold water. It's designed to, again, infiltrate water. People said to me, well, can we, you know, could you make something that's swale-like and line it with a bentonite and, and make it like that and make it a pond? Well, you'd make a pond. You'd just be making a long pond, but you better go a hell of a lot deeper than a foot. Um, no swale would make a good pond. It just wouldn't because it's not deep enough uh, to maintain water. Um, and you can see, again, I want to show you, people say, do swales work? Well, you show me another place on my property with, vet I didn't seed any vetch this year. Uh, that's vetch coming back on its own. Plantain, look at the plantain. Marshmallow here. It's not coming back up yet, but it will. It'll come back up from its roots. Look at this. Yeah, swales work. When they're properly installed, that's another thing. People say, well, I put a swale in, it didn't work. Well, maybe you didn't do it right. Or uh, if you put a swale in here, it will make a marsh. Well, don't put a swale there. When it comes to swales, like any design element, we don't put one in just to have one. We look at the system that we're working with and we decide whether or not that element fits our purposes. And on this piece of property right here, these swales fit my purposes. Now on other parts of the property, you don't see any swales because they don't fit in there for various reasons. But there you go, guys. Here's another example right here. There's a sill right there. So we got that. <laughs> There's... <laughs> There's a three-year-old peach tree. <laughs> yeah, that's the power of swales right there. Three -year -old, on a piece of land where there's a uh, this is the deep soil over here. There's like 11 inches of dirt and then solid rock. Right? The rest of the property's got like four. That's another reason they don't have swales on them. But yeah, that's nobody can even grow a fruit tree around here. Everybody puts them in and they die. Look at that. That's your swale. I got to cut all those suckers off. That's a apricot there. Uh, no, it's a nectarine, and you can see all the suckers growing off the rootstock, like I talked about with that tree over there in my last video. And uh, anyway, guys, there's a big old cherry. That's one of my other cherries that survived on my property. And uh, it's got some flowers on it. We'll see. I don't know. That's a Stella cherry. I'm to a point with cherries where they either survive and make it or they don't. I'm not sure what that guy is, but uh, anyway, that's how swales work. They fill up, they stay on contour, they shed water in a sheet when they've received capacity, drop down to the next one, infiltrate, spread, pacify water.